Hello once again, dear children. We have already looked at the general aspects of evolution, including the importance of variation, the sources of variation, the types of variation, just to recall the types where discontinuous and continuous. If you'd like to learn more about it, check our last video. Today, we're gonna to be looking at two major guys who propose theories about evolution. One is Jean-Baptiste de Lamarck. I like saying that. He was a French guy, always French guys have got like such romantic sounding names. And the other guy was, yes, that's Lamarck. And the other guy is known as the father of evolution, Charles Darwin. Of course, being the father of evolution, he is the guy we'll concentrate on most. However, you got to know about what Lamarck spoke about and why we do not acknowledge any of his so-called theories. Theories, I'd like to put in inverted commas, because we realized that they were false. That is based on evidence that we have got. So darlings, first let's look at Lamarck and what he had to say. So if we're looking at Lamarck, very importantly before we look at Lamarck, they would ask you about what Lamarck had to say and ask you to apply it in a particular situation that they give to you. So we would learn the generalized aspects about what Lamarck had to say. But very importantly, my darlings, you would have to apply that in a particular situation. The same with Charles Darwin. So let's begin with what Lamarck had to say. He said that there are two laws on which evolution is based. Now remember when they use laws in inverted commas, means they are not really laws. They are not irrefutable, okay? The first one is the inheritance of acquired characteristics. Let's look at that entire concept. Inheritance means you pass on the characteristic from parent to offspring. Acquired means, acquired characteristic, means a characteristic you have gained in this lifetime. For example, if I have gained the characteristic of let's say huge muscles by exercising. That means I would be able to pass this characteristic that I have gained to my children. So that's what he said. Whatever you have gained in this lifetime, when you have children, you will now pass on these characteristics to your children. Are you with me? So characteristics developed during the life of an individual can be passed on to their offspring. Acquired is what you get. Okay. Now these are all physical characteristics, my darling. And you will realize that physical characteristics are due to genes. However, if these physical characteristics are not due to genes, then they cannot be passed on to your offspring. That is why we do not accept Lamarck's theory. The second theory, in inverted commas, once again, is his law of use and disuse. What does it mean? He says, as an organism uses a structure or an organ more regularly, it becomes better developed or enlarged. So for example, he said, because the giraffe used its neck more and more to reach the leaves on the tops of trees, its neck became longer. And therefore, when the giraffe had papa giraffes, it passed this characteristic of a long neck to its babies. Okay. And similarly, he said, if an organism does not use a structure and organ more frequently, it becomes less developed or reduced in size and may disappear altogether. For example, he said, the reason why snakes do not have legs is because snakes had legs once, 
but because they use the motion of crawling and the legs were not used, so because their legs were not used frequently, they became less developed in the offspring until eventually they disappeared altogether. And that's why snakes do not have legs. So my darling, these are his two laws in inverted commas, the inheritance of acquired characteristics and the law of use and disuse. You must be able to explain this, but at the same time, you must be able to say why we do not accept those laws. The first reason is that there's no evidence to, to support the idea that whatever physical characteristic you have developed in your life will be passed on to the offspring. And there's no evidence to suggest that if you use an organ more and more frequently, it'll become better developed. Or if you use an organ less and less frequently, it'll become less developed. In other words, my darlings, these two laws in inverted commas are not accepted. The one that is now accepted is Charles Darwin's theory of natural selection. Now, many children understand this wrongly. So let's explain and get it clearly to, to, through to you, my babies. Now, his theory of natural selection is based on three important facts, that there is a great deal of variation amongst members of the same species. If we take humans belonging to the species, same species, we are known as Homo sapien. Sapien is the name of our species. Homo is our genus name. We show great variation amongst our members. Isn't that so, my darling? There's even variation amongst you and your siblings. So he says, based on this great deal of variation, my darlings, that is how evolution can be explained. Now, how can it be explained? He said that this variation will confer on certain organisms favorable characteristics, which will enable them to cope with challenges. So should they not have this favorable characteristic, then they cannot cope with the challenges and they will die. Now, very often, they do not ask you to speak about Charles Darwin's natural selection in a general form. They ask you to apply it. So let's, darling, let's look at the general explanation for Charles Darwin's theory of natural selection and then see how it is applied in a particular situation. Okay. Applying the ideas of Lamarck and Darwin. So let's take a situation like this. Three frames. In the first frame, they're showing you cacti. These are plants, my darlings, that are suited to grow in very dry conditions. And they normally grow in a desert, but they can grow in your garden. Very nice to have them in your garden because you don't have to water them frequently. Okay. So if you look at the first frame, it shows you a picture of many cacti, but there's variation amongst them. Some of them have got long roots. I wish they had showed this more visibly to the children. And some of them have short roots. Hmm? They should have shown the short roots distinctly different from the ones with long roots. So the variation is that they are cacti. The variation is that some of them have long roots, some of them have short roots. Then if you look at frame B, and by the way, the sun represents heat or periods of drought that the heat would bring, my darlings. You would see here that only those with long roots are surviving. Those with short roots are not surviving. So something has happened. It means those with long roots had the favorable characteristic and they were able to reach the water deep in the ground and survive. Those with short roots could not reach the water and they died. See, the ones with shorter roots are absent. That is because they died. They didn't run away, my babies. And thirdly, only the plants with longer roots were able to reproduce to form offspring for longer roots. From genetics, you realize that if the parents have particular characteristics, the characteristics can be passed on to their offspring. 
So the allele for longer roots was a favorable one. And then it passed, and this allele for longer roots was passed on to the offspring. So you would have many more in next generation that would have long roots. So I just used these frames to explain what we see. But what would Darwin have said and what would Lamarck have said? Basically, what I described was what Darwin would have said. But what would Lamarck have said? Remember, let's go back. Lamarck proposed this idea of two laws, the inheritance of acquired characteristics and the law of use and disuse. So the law of use and disuse will bring on certain physical characteristics being present. And then when these organisms reproduced, they would pass these physical characteristics to their offspring. So I'd like to say that this was the law first, according to Lamarck, and then whatever characteristic they developed in their life would be passed on to their offspring when they reproduce. So let's look at how Lamarck would have explained this, my babies. So what would Lamarck have said? Let's look at what Lamarck would have said. So let's use these guiding questions. This is important, these guiding questions, so that you can get your full marks. What was the original characteristic at start? Lamarck would have said, all capti had short roots originally. What did the organism do? He said the capti frequently stretched their roots. Why did they do this? To reach water deep in the soil. What was the result? As a result, the roots became longer because why? They stretched their roots. What happened with this new characteristic? The characteristic of long roots acquired that they got in this way was then passed on to the next generation when they reproduced. What was the result? Eventually, all the plants had long roots. So he would have said, they started off all with short roots and they landed up all with long roots. Why? Because they stretched their roots because they wanted to reach the soil. And as a result, the roots became longer. When they reproduced, the characteristic for long roots was passed on to their offspring. That's what Lamarck would have said. He never said that there was variation because that's what Darwin said. So my darlings, Please be mindful of the fact they will give you a situation in the examination and I'll ask you to apply Darwin's theory of natural selection. Hmm? So you'll start off with how Darwin would have explained it by describing the variation. So you'd first say, as a result of genetic variation amongst the capti, you would have some with long roots and some with short. Let's be specific. Okay, sorry. What was the challenge? With Darwin, organisms evolved because there was a challenge, not because they wanted to evolve as Lamarck said. Okay, with Darwin, you always state what was the challenge. The challenge is normally a change in the environment. So always state what is the challenge. State what is the variation and then state what is a challenge. So in this case, as a result of drought, drought was a challenge. Competition for water occurred. Now, which ones would have the favorable one characteristic, sorry, to be able to cope with drought? So what was the result of the challenge? So. The ones with longer roots had the favorable characteristic. State that, darlings, not as it's stated over here. Those with longer roots had the favorable characteristic and they were able to reach the water deep in the ground. The ones with short roots had the unfavorable characteristic and were not able to reach the water and they died. Okay, say, state it like that. By the way, I forgot to state that those with longer roots had the favorable characteristic, were able to reach the water deep in the ground and survived. You must say it because Mark is given for saying survived. What is this called? 
natural selection, where nature selects those that are most suitable to survive. Nature is the selecting force. Hmm? What happened to the favorable characteristic? The allele for longer roots was passed on to the next generations and eventually all the plants had longer roots. Or you could have said the allele for the longer roots was passed on to the next generation and then more of the plants in the next generation had longer roots until eventually through subsequent generations having that allele passed on that all of the plants had longer roots. We will deal more with this when we come to specific questions. So once again, state what was the genetic variation. State what was the challenge. Then state which one had the favorable characteristic and survived. Which one had the unfavorable characteristic and died. State that this is called natural selection. Then state what happened that the allele for this favorable characteristic in this case, longer roots, was passed on to the subsequent generation through reproduction. And then the subsequent generation would have more plants with longer roots until eventually through more and more reproduction through the ages, all the plants had longer roots. Is that okay? Okay. So let's look at activity one. I write an account of how Lamarck would have explained development of longer roots in modern giraffes. And also, also write an account of how Darwin would have said. So what would have Lamarck have said there? What was the original characteristic? All giraffes had short necks. Are you with me? What did the organism do? Giraffes stretched their necks to reach the leaves on trees. Why did they do this? Because food was available there and they wanted to reach this or avoid competition. In fact, he never said that the environment was a selecting force or nature was a selecting force. So you can't say that some drought occurred and food was only available on the trees. Are you with me? So let's look at it, my darlings. All giraffes had short necks. These giraffes frequently checked stretch their necks. They did this to reach the leaves that were available only high on the trees. As a result, their necks became longer. The characteristic for long necks acquired in this way was then passed on to the next generation. Eventually, all the necks had, oh, sorry, all the giraffes had longer necks. Learn this off by heart, papas. Learn it off by heart so you, you learn how to use it in other questions. What would Darwin have said? As a result of genetic variation, some giraffes had long necks, some had short necks. As a result of leaves being available only high up on trees because of drought and the plants below dying, giraffes competed for these leaves. So he always spoke about which one were able to outcompete the others because of a favorable characteristic. Here, he didn't talk about competition more like they just wanted to stretch their necks to reach the leaves. Giraffes with shorter necks died. Say why? Because they could not reach the leaves. Giraffes with longer necks survived. Say why? Because they could reach the leaves. This is natural selection. The allele for longer necks was passed on to subsequent generations until all the giraffes now have long necks. Explain why Lamarck's theory was rejected, my darlings. There is no evidence to show that acquired characteristics are inherited. And there's no evidence to show that structures used more frequently become more developed or vice versa. Babies, with this, we end the session on the theory of Lamarck and the theory of Darwin. I will show you some questions in the next session to show you how this can be applied. God bless you until I meet you again.